In this tutorial, we'll cover everything you need to know from booting up the game for the first time to winning some matches. At the end, we'll also include a full deep dive into the settings so that you know exactly what each option is doing. When you play Veil, you spawn into the armory, your own virtual home where you can try out the weapons or hang out with friends and play mini games. In the main room, we have a shooting range with a table of weapons for you to try. You can grab a weapon by either moving your hand all of the way to the gun, or you can use the force grip to grab objects from a distance. Just point your hand until the item is high highlighted, then grip. With a gun in your main hand, grip it with your off hand to reduce recoil. You may notice that you can grab the gun in several different spots, but where you grab it doesn't affect recoil. Once you're holding a gun with both hands, use your main hand trigger to shoot it until you run out of ammo. Almost all of VR controllers are equipped with two main buttons in each hand called A, B, X, and Y on the Oculus controllers, for example. The top of these two buttons is the mag release button on your main hand when you're holding a gun. Press it to drop the empty magazine. Now grab a magazine from your chest or from the table and insert it into the gun. Then use your offhand trigger to grab the charging handle, pull it back and release. Now you're ready to shoot again. Most guns are reloaded the same way with only slight variations on where the charging handle is located. But to reload an AK, you have to grab the magazine and pull it out with your offhand. Or you can knock it out with another magazine by tapping it here by this tab. You always spawn with three magazines of ammo for your primary weapon and two magazines for your secondary weapon. If you run out of ammo during a match, you can always steal guns and ammo from your fallen enemy's body. Most guns also allow you to change the fire rate from full auto to either burst or single fire. You can do this by pressing the bottom button on your controller while holding the gun, or you can do it by physically grabbing the fire rate selector with your offhand and turning it. All of your tactical grenades are located on your wrist. To use one, just grab it, press trigger to activate it, and then you have two to three seconds, depending on the grenade, to throw it before it explodes. To change your weapons and tacticals, open up your menu and select loadouts. You can have up to five loadouts saved. With each loadout, you can select a primary weapon, a secondary weapon, sights for each weapon, and up to two tacticals. Feel free to use the armory to try out different weapons, weapon sights, and grenades, but you can also change your loadouts mid-match if you need to. While you're trying out the guns, go to the settings in the menu and you can change your reticle colors, turn on virtual stock, firearm smoothing, and more. We'll go over all of these settings more in depth later in this video, but some settings you'll want to check before you join a match is your audio settings, just to make sure that you can hear and talk to teammates. Under audio, make sure voice chat output mode is enabled and make sure voice chat input mode is set to open microphone. You can also set the input mode to mute it or push to talk. If set to push to talk, you can press your offhand thumbstick anytime you want to say something. This is especially useful if you're a streamer or have a lot of background noise and don't want to annoy your teammates. If you leave it set to open microphone, you can mute yourself at any time by hitting this microphone icon on the bottom right corner of the menu. Once you have your input mode set, make sure that your input device is set to the correct device and that the input volume is at 100%. There are three main ways that you can join a match. First, you can hit this matchmaking button in the middle. At the time of making this video, this feature is experimental and won't always work. If you hit matchmaking and don't automatically join a lobby within a few moments, then go to the server browser and join some games there. In the server browser, games are listed with what map they're on, what game mode, how many players are in the match, your estimated ping, and the option to either view or join a lobby. Viewing a lobby puts you in spectator mode where you can fly around and watch people play. Next to the server name, you'll see this symbol indicating that the server is private, which means you'll need a code to join that match. Look for some servers that are open. We should have servers up 24 seven that the community can join. But in case there aren't any, you can also create your own server. You can host your own server by selecting custom game. Here you can choose the map, the game mode, the region, and whether or not you want it to be open or closed closed. If you make it a closed server, it will auto-generate a password that other players will need to join your game. Once you have all the options selected, you can hit create lobby at the bottom. This lobby will now show up in the server list as your server. As people join the server, they can choose which side they want to be on, and when you're ready, hit start game. If you join a custom lobby that hasn't started yet, you can view the lobby information by hitting custom game in the top left of your menu. Once in a custom lobby, the host can change the map and game mode at any time by opening their menu and clicking this button here in the corner. As soon as you select a new map, the lobby will load into that map, so make sure you change the game mode first if you plan on changing it. At the time of making this video, Vale has two main game modes that you can play across several different maps, Team Deathmatch and Artifact. Team Deathmatch is 5v5. The first team to hit 50 kills in under 10 minutes wins the match, or the team with the highest kills at the end of 10 minutes wins. This is a great game mode to warm up and to get used to the different 
different guns and parts of the maps. Artifact is our main competitive game mode and is similar to other popular search and destroy game modes. In this mode, the Rayab must defend two artifact sites on the map while the colonists have a single scanner that they must bring to the artifact sites and deploy. In each round of artifact, you only have one life and either side can win a round by defeating all of the enemies or either deploying or disabling the scanner. After 10 rounds, the team switch sides and the first team to win 11 rounds wins the match. When you spawn as a colonist, you're given a single scanner. One person must grab it and put it on their chest and then make their way to one of the two artifact sites. At the site, you must be within this circle to start the scan, which you do by holding the artifact in your hand and turning your palm face up and then with your other hand grabbing the yellow dot and touching the pink dots until they're all green. Once the artifact is deployed, the timer stops and the colonists win if the scan finishes, even if all of the colonists are dead. The only way for a ray up to win once the artifact is deployed is by interrupting the scan, which they can do by grabbing the scanner and holding the trigger for a couple of seconds. We plan to add more game modes in the future, so if you have any that you want to see, drop them down in the comments so that our devs know what to work on. Outside of the main game modes, you can always hang out in the armory between matches. The armory currently has a couple of board games and we plan to add more things in the future. Each board game has a reset button on the underside of the table that puts all of their pieces back into place if they get messed up or if you want to start a new game. This button next to the shooting range allows you to switch sides from Rayab to Colonist and vice versa. You can also turn the shooting range into a hockey rink by going to your computer's keyboard and pressing Control H. In the future, we'll be adding more customizability to the armory for more things to do, but until then, we do have some hidden items such as unreleased guns that you can try out if you can find them. Veil vale uses the Steam Friends system, so to be able to invite or join friends, they must be friends with you on Steam. At the time of making this video, the social features aren't completely finished, so a lot of this is going to change and will definitely be improved over time. But for now, your friends list will show you who is online on Steam, not necessarily who's online playing Veil. Vale. For them to join you, you have to invite them first by hitting the invite button, and then they can accept your invite by going to their social page and hitting join on your name. The settings are split into three sections, gameplay, visual, and audio. Under gameplay, you can set the reticle color to whatever color you want. Zero is the default red, while 360 is white, with every other color in between. Setting the reticle color here will apply it to all of your guns. Below that, you can change your selected spray, which is basically a sticker that you can place in the world by pressing your dominant hand's thumbstick while pointing at a flat surface. All of your available sprays will be listed here for you to choose from. Firearm Virtual Stock helps you to aim when you don't have a physical gun stock. It basically moves the gun stock to your shoulder, allowing you to use your offhand more for aiming than your main hand, which is closer to what real life would feel like. We have two different versions of Virtual Stock that you can try. Firearm Motion Smoothing smooths out your gun and can be really helpful if you have shaky hands like me and have a hard time aiming at something far away. The downside is that it can feel slower to aim due to the smoothing, which can slow down your reaction time. Changing your dominant hand will change which side the ammo counter is on on your guns. It will also change how your gun sits on your chest and other little details to make life easier for playing left-handed or right-handed. Changing the control scheme to flipped will switch which thumbstick is used for movement. To play fully left-handed, you'll need to switch both of these settings, but we keep them separate for the left-handed players that like to use their left hand for movement instead of their right. Virtual turn mode, snap turn angle, and virtual movement mode are all pretty basic settings in all VR games. If you're unsure what they do, just leave them at default. I personally only like to change my virtual movement mode to continuous hand so that when I move forward on my thumbstick, it follows my hand instead of my head. You can also turn virtual crouch on or off. With virtual crouch on, you can crouch in-game by moving your main hand thumbstick down and up. If you don't like that or have issues with drift on that controller, you can turn this setting off and just crouch in real life. Grip mode set to hold means that if you let go of the grip button, you'll drop whatever you're holding in game. Toggle just means that you have to hit the grip button once to grab things and then hit it again to drop objects. Firearm grip swapping allows you to grab the gun with your other hand without dropping it. I usually keep this disabled so that I don't accidentally grab the gun with my off hand when I don't want to. You can also set the magazine and tactical grip mode to trigger grip if you're used to that from other games. Spectator turn sensitivity is used only in observer mode so you can ignore it. And Pluto Sphere compatibility only needs to be turned on if you're playing the game on your Quest 2 via Pluto Sphere. In the future, we'll make a full tutorial on Pluto Sphere and it will be linked in the description if you want to try it out. Now on to the visual settings. Anti-aliasing quality changes the MSAA and post-processing. On Ultra, MSAA 
is set to four times and every other setting it will be set to two times and low it sets the msaa to two times with no post processing post processing mainly affects bloom so for example it will affect the glow that some reticles have shadow quality is the biggest hit to performance right now and so it's the first thing you should turn down if you have performance issues most of our shadows are baked into the map but we do have some dynamic shadows that this setting will affect texture quality is something that you should be okay leaving on high or ultra unless you have very little vram for example if you only have three gigabytes of vram then this is worth putting on low effects quality will affect the quality of particle effects and shaders for example the bomb effects and the artifact scanner effects amd fsr 2.0 is an upscaling technology that can greatly improve the performance if you're having issues even though it's from amd it works with all gpus including nvidia essentially it lowers your game's resolution then uses fsr to upscale the base resolution this increases your performance while retaining most of the visual quality we have four settings depending on how much performance you want quality means you'll get a nice boost in performance and the visual difference is barely noticeable ultra performance means that you'll get way better performance but you'll definitely be able to see a difference in the visual quality even then this is still better than simply lowering your resolution enemies in veil are highlighted to ensure competitive integrity across all maps even in dark settings here in the settings you can change the highlight color to whatever you want it to be just in case you don't like the default color hud horizontal and vertical layout change where your in-game hud displays in the headset the in-game hud includes your health and the kill feed spectator eye view changes the preview window on your pc to show either left or right eye and you can choose if you want the ui to be showing or not set this to your dominant eye which is the same eye you use to aim and if you're playing competitively and have a recording mandate make sure that it is set to include the ui spectator live camera mode is an option you can change when using live to record or stream your games if you want to know more about that we'll link below to our video that explains how live works with fail to get the best looking recordings possible we already went over the audio settings in the beginning of this video but there's one more setting that you might want to check which is your height calibration if you notice that you frequently spawn into games crouched then use the height calibration to set your height properly you shouldn't have to do this very often unless you frequently switch between playing seated and standing and that is a quick rundown of the basics to play veil vale. veil vale is a game that changes every single day so if you're watching this in the future and things look or function differently that's okay we'll do our best to keep this tutorial updated for new players and as soon as we can we'll add an in-game tutorial to make things easier if you're having performance issues or just want to get a few more frames out of your pc check out this video that we made the ultimate vr performance guide